This is a video that highlights quite a few very interesting and novel techniques. This is a patient with a retinal detachment. They had previously had a scleral buckle placed. And normally, when I do the vitrectomy portion of this procedure during a buckle vitrectomy, I get over the sweet spot, the, the retinal break, and I'm able to drain fluid out. In this case, it didn't quite work that way. So we use a guarded needle technique. This is a 26-gauge, 3-8-inch needle that we guard with a 70 sleeve or a 270 sleeve that prevents over penetration put it right at the anterior crest of the scleral buckle this part of the video is sped up quite a bit i think about 400 percent just because this is fairly chronic fluid and it drains fairly slowly this needle is on a 3 cc open-ended syringe so i'm using the pressure inside the eye to force an egress of fluid out through that 26 gauge 3 8 inch needle we can see here that the pressure is up at 60. Once again, that does two things. Number one, it prevents any bleeding from the choroid as we've overcome our choroidal perfusion pressure. And number two, it forces the fluid out through the needle into the open-ended syringe where you can drain a copious amount of fluid. Here we can see the subretinal fluid's draining out quite nicely. Once again, this is uh, sped up for time's sake. And as this subretinal fluid drains down, we're angling our needle, bevel away from the retina, and this retina is able to just kind of flatten right onto the needle, and then we just extract the needle as the last bits of fluid are withdrawn. This is very helpful in primary buckles and in buccal vitrectomies when you have bullous subretinal fluid. What this affords us the ability to do now is to go in and just do a straightaway vitrectomy. So since there's not that bullous fluid, we can see how our buckle looks. We can vitrectomize 360 degrees. I do put in intravitreal triamcinolone in this patient's eye because I'm trying to identify if there's any hyloid down, uh, looking for any vitreous schesis that could result in additional PVR. Also helps me identify peripheral vitreous. Now we go to air and we can see that we have still some subretinal fluid. So in this case, I'm going to create a posterior draining retinotomy. I always like to keep these superior and as nasal as possible. We drain with a soft tip cannula, 25 gauge. And now we're able to laser around that area. Now, if you notice up above here, you can see this light reflex. It looks almost like my buckle. And some of that reflex is my buckle, but a part of it is the vitreous. So when I see a lot of anterior vitreous and I've gone to air, uh, I'll utilize vitrectomy under air. So here I am with my 25 gauge cutter. And I utilize that ability to visualize that anterior vitreous, the fact that air pulls it back more posteriorly to be able to remove that additional vitreous to decrease the chances that this patient will have a recurrent detachment. Laser things up, place gas, and we're done. Thanks for watching.